Are you upstairs? You got any weapons on you? I love my wife. I love my children. I was not there the night my children died. A question for you to think about for a sec. What could possess a man to murder his entire family? And just how twisted would you have to be to not only commit this heinous crime, but to live alongside their bodies for weeks? Well, this is an actual case, and the main suspect is Anthony Tote, the horrible man who executed his family with the weirdest motive of all time. It starts on a peaceful afternoon in the community of Celebrations, Florida, until the police showed up on the front door of Anthony's property on January 13th, 2020. The police were there to serve a federal warrant for healthcare fraud charges stemming from his pharmaceutical therapy business. However, as officers were standing in front of the property door, they noticed a very strong odor, which then they decided to search the house. And well, what they found inside the home was truly terrifying. There were already four decaying bodies, believed to be his wife, who was 42 year old, Megan Tote, and the three children, Alec, Tyler, and Zoe. They were of course discovered inside of the home, though the bodies were found on January 13th, 2020, but the murder had actually occurred in December of 2019. This of course meant that Anthony Tote had spent weeks living alongside the corpses of his family in the house before he was caught and arrested. By Anthony's own accord, his youngest daughter, Zoe, who was four years old, was the first to have her life taken away by suffocation of a pillow. He then turned to his two sons, stabbed them and suffocated them to death. Then once the children were all executed, he would turn to his wife. But his wife would stab herself in the abdomen, which wouldn't kill her immediately. So in order to finish the job, Anthony would suffocate her to death. And then once all of them were deceased, Anthony would take them to the master bedroom, where he had also tried to take his own life by digesting large amounts of Benadryl. However, this attempt to take his own life away would of course fail. And over time, suspicion would begin to rise in the neighborhood as mail would continue to pile up on the front porch. But alongside the large pile of mail was an unchecked eviction notice causing further suspicion as it was obvious that the house was occupied. But of course, things would become more clearer on January 13th, 2020, when a group of police officers were greeted by a very terrified Anthony. Upon visiting his home with the arrest warrant, it was at this moment that the police knew that the fraud charges were not all that that was being played here. They now knew something more sinister had gone on. Of course, out of concern, they would ask immediately, where's the rest of the family? And a visibly shaken Anthony would pretend to call out for his wife, who was in the master bedroom. And the police could see that Anthony Anthony was shaken and he was just terrified, so they would try to calm him down. Yeah. Meg is in there, Meg? Alright, come on down, buddy. Come. Just see, have a seat. You good? I got you. Just have a seat. After a couple of seconds, the officer decided that we'll go fetch them ourselves because clearly they aren't coming down. So the officers would climb up the stairs and once they got to the landing, they would turn right because that's where the master bedroom was. So as they're looking at this door, they would open it up, expecting the wife and kids to be behind this door, potentially hiding. But as soon as they opened the door up, they were hit with the most gruesome scene imaginable. On the ground laid heavily decomposed bodies of three children alongside the body of the family dog. Officers on the scene would state that the daughter's body was so decayed that they almost didn't spot her. Anthony of course would quickly be escorted out of his home by the police but with immensely different charges than the original ones that the police were going for. These four were four counts of homicide and one count of animal cruelty. He would immediately be prepared for interrogation by detectives. But before this interrogation began, Anthony was read his Miranda rights and also his charges as the two detectives began to question him. But pay close attention on how Anthony went from a visibly nervous person at the time to a person who was utterly calm while being interrogated. It was was as if he had planned or somehow believed that he could talk his way out of the charges against him. He began answering every question that was being thrown at him calmly, making claims that it was his and his wife's idea to carry out this act. And this was because the two had seen a video about an up and coming apocalypse and he stated that he wished he was there with them in the afterlife. I feel very sad and very upset that I'm still here and yeah. 
kids or somewhere else you'd rather be? With my family, on the, on the other side. On the other side. Mm -hmm. Okay. And you do know your wife and, and children are deceased? Mm -hmm. Yes, and that's where I want to be. That's where you want to be? Okay. And in watching these videos and watching everything going on, she presented them to me, and I started watching them with kind of a, um, I use it, but yeah, whatever. And the more and more we watched, the more and more I gained an understanding that there is more than this life here. Mm -hmm. A higher, a higher um, level of consciousness. Mm -hmm. When it came to the day of the trial, Anthony decided to stand in court as a witness for himself, open to convince the judge with his tactics and his testimony, just as he thought he was able to convince the detectives during the interrogation. But little did Anthony know he was about to make his biggest mistake of his life, taken as a witness. Now taken witness during the trial, Anthony with tears in his eyes, placed all the blame on his wife for the death of their children and also the family dog. He would claim that when he arrived home he saw the children were deceased and he stated that his wife when she saw him would take her own life in front of him after of course taking the life of the kids what was the occurrence that made that day memorable i came home and my kids were dead But of course, that claim was miles different to the one he gave in the interrogation. When confronted about this inconsistent statement, Anthony would claim that he wasn't in the right headspace during the interrogation due to a head injury that he picked up from falling down the stairs. I don't even remember that day. Last thing I remember was falling down the stairs and smacking my head on the stairs, which I resulted in a fracture on my neck. Next thing I knew, I woke up here. He would also claim that he was covering for his wife and knew nothing about his children's death. I was covering for my wife. Obviously, unsuccessfully, because as you saw by the video, compared to what they said, I had no clue had my kids died. However, this does beg the question, why? Why would he not call the police? After listening to Anthony's claim and statements, the jury took some time to decide the case's outcome. At that moment, Anthony seemingly turned to his old self, filled with fear, knowing that avoiding prison for his terrible actions would nearly be impossible, given all the clear evidence that was being presented against him. Cynthia Copco, Megan Todd's aunt, and godmother to the children, had emphasized that the situation could have been avoided. As she tried to warn Megan when Anthony suddenly gained a significant amount of weight and then he called me over and over just to get a hold of us to see what we were doing where we were and i told i picked up my phone and i said stop harassing us we're having a girlfriend day you'll be the first to know if we're having any trouble you'll be the first one we call april of 2019 i had a talk with megan because tony had put on tremendous amount of weight over you know a short period of time and I said Megan I'm worried about Tony because he's put on so much weight I would love to offer him to get ultrasounds of his carotids to make sure there's no blockage many people believe anthony committed this crime against his own family out of fear that they would learn about his hidden debt but despite this overwhelming popular opinion of the public the prosecutors were still prohibited from bringing up his fraudulent activities at all after six hours of discussion amongst the jury the final verdict was given anthony Toads would be sentenced to life in prison without the possibility of parole for the murder of his wife and children with an additional year for murdering his dog.